while we were here at the SEMA show, we saw some of the new cars that Lingenfelter Performance brought out, and in my mind, Corvette Performance is synonymous with Lingenfelter also. Ken, what's going on with this blue Corvette? Well, uh, this is our version of what uh, of a ZR1. This started out as a basic ZR1 Corvette. Wonderful Which, car. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but the, a basic ZR1. Yeah, I mean. you're right. I mean, yeah. it's an incredible car right out of the factory. But, you know, Lingenfelder Performance <laughs> is all about horsepower and speed. And so we went to work on it, got our engineers focused on what we could do with it. And uh, we wanted to see how fast we could get the thing to go without doing any real internal changes to the motor. So, okay. Uh, we made some changes in the intake and the fuel management. Um, Graham Behan is our chief engineer. He works wonders with uh, engines like this. And uh, we basically took this car out to the drag strip then to see just what it would do. And uh, after a while, um, a couple of runs after learning how to launch it with all that horsepower, uh, we ended up doing a 10.03 quarter mile, uh, which was just incredible to watch. I bet that's um, unbelievable. 10.03. 10.03. On a stock bottom uh, on end a car. On a stock bottom car, that's correct. The uh, the car stuff, now we did change the tires. We had to put some well, racing yeah, tires Well, yeah, but I mean, you didn't, it's not a stroke or another crank or anything. No, no. All stuff's no. Stock. The, uh, the car does 0 to 60 in 6, or 2.62 seconds. <laughs> uh, the quarter mile speed was upwards of 138 miles an hour. Wow. Um, it, it was just a fun, fun project. Did GM really leave that much on the table with this engine? Uh, I think, you know, in order for GM to fulfill their own requirements in terms of durability and the test work that they do on these vehicles, there's always something left on the table. Mm -hmm. um, what we tend to do is try and push the envelope and try and find how far we can go with the stock pieces mm -hmm. before we have to upgrade significant parts of the engine. And the beauty of the LS9 is that it already has a forged rotating assembly in terms of it's got forged pistons, it's got a forged crankshaft, titanium rods. So we decided what we'd try and do is see how far we could take that stock engine without putting a single wrench on it and just to see what that car was capable of. And we have a smaller pulley on the, on the top of the supercharger which is about 2.6 inches. Uh, we have 10% overdrive on the TV dampener so we put a larger dampener on the car mm -hmm. to upspeed the supercharger some more. Mm -hmm. We're probably spinning the supercharger, you know, GM probably spins it 14,000 RPM. We're probably pretty close to 20,000 RPM on supercharger right now. What does that translate to boost levels? Um, currently we're seeing about 16 pounds of boost mm -hmm. in, the, I mean, in the intake. This forged assembly below should handle 16 pounds, you would think, no problem. Well, well yes, and, and, and that's the beauty of it for us. But there are other things that we do. Obviously we upgraded the intercool system on the car. We haven't done anything on this vehicle with the intercoolers that actually sit on top of the supercharger. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're seeing only 16 pounds of boost after the intercooler because at the level we're at now, there are restrictions. Uh, okay, okay, interesting. But what we did was increase the storage capacity of the cooling system and increase the heat exchanger up front. Okay. Uh, we actually doubled the size of that. Okay. But what that does give us is consistency between runs. You know, gotcha. We got three runs within 25 minutes that our mile an hour didn't vary by the, more than half a mile an hour in the wow. 141 five range. Well, and on that end, I would think your transaxle and tires had, you know, more of a variable on that to well, give a repeatable launch down in a car that's... Yeah, it's essentially quite difficult to launch the car. Um, we've been running, the obviously, the drag slicks on it. Um, we're currently getting about a 1.6 60 foot time, which is essentially pretty slow. Yeah, you'd think it'd be a little bit quicker than um, that. The weak link in the system so far has been the stock clutch. Okay. But it's a, it's a very robust clutch. I mean, you actually see the car launch, you see black smoke come out from behind it, and that's clutch the clutch. Smoke. But it's there in second, then it's there in third. So give me the power numbers again. Uh, we're currently running 739 horse to the rear wheels. And. A stock clutch is handling that. Absolutely. It's amazing to me in itself. Absolutely. I mean, it's a very robust clutch. It's got a loop material. It's a Saks design. Mm -hmm. And we're actually working with, in conjunction with Saks on getting 20% more clamp load to the clutch, and we think that'll be perfect. And our, our target is the nines. We ran a 10-0-3 at 141. I think the clutch improvement would get you the nines. Well, the clutch improvement would get us the nines. We noticed a tendency for the car to roll into deep stage, mm. which is obviously hurting our ET. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we did some modifications to that and after the show we're hoping to get back to the track to see what we got.
is this going to be a package or some upgrades that a consumer can get their hands on through you guys? You know, we've already got a few things we're going to do that we're going to make available to our customers. We're real interested in making sure we keep the hood down because we really don't want anybody to see what we've done so far. Uh -huh. uh, Street uh, racing style. Yeah, there you go. But. Uh, but having said that, uh, we do have some things that we plan to have available on our website. Um, that website's www.lingenfelder.com. And uh, I'd just say to our customers, uh, uh, stay tuned. Uh, there'll be some fun, th fun things we can do with this car. Awesome.